Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's me. Pound for pound, best in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's me. What's up, GQ Sports? This is Kamaru Usman, AKA the Nigerian Nightmare, and this is how I made, spent, and saved my first million. I was born and raised in a bit in Auchi, Nigeria. We farmed and we did everything. We immigrated here to the States at about eight years old. Growing up, we, we learned a lot of money lessons from my parents. One of my first real hustle was flipping Pokemon cards. So I found a good supplier where I could buy the collection of cards, about six, seven bucks, and I would get one or two rare cards in there that I would turn around and flip for about 25, sometimes even 40, depending on the scarcity of that card. So that was my hustle. Everybody had a good Christmas that year. After leaving college, I got an opportunity to be a coach on season 14 of The Ultimate Fighter. As it comes full circle, I end up on the season 21. So I end up winning that season, started my UFC career. Making that transition was probably one of the scariest decisions. I've been doing wrestling for a long, long time. And wrestling was still control. I knew how to defend myself, but now going all the way into this completely new sport was nerve wracking. I was scared of it, but I was courageous towards it. And I've had to, of course, have different jobs. You know, while wrestling, I, I worked at Applebee's. It was a fun job. I worked with some very, very fun people out there in Nebraska. It really helped me understand working for your money. And then once I got more and more into MMA, my first fight, I made one and one, which is good. And first fight, 1,000, 1,000. My opponent missed his weight, so I got, I think, an extra $250 from him. So fast forward a few years to how I made my first million. My first fight in the UFC was, it was a good one because I ended up getting a bonus. So it's an extra 50,000. So I'm like, I'm rich, <laughs> I'm rich. The fight that really broke it for me and hit me and let me know, oh wow, we're making a little bit of money now. I would say it was my Sean Strickland fight. I ended up walking away with like almost 70 bands. I'm like, oh, that's more than the teacher's salary. I'm good, I'm rich. <laughs> so that was the first fight that I had a significant cushion in life for my family. So my second headline fight, which was RDA, Rafael Dos Anjos. So I think that was the first time I seen six figures. That Tuesday, when that direct deposit hit the account, whoo, I just stared at the account. Just stared at those zeros. Oh man, I'm here. <laughs> so when you become a champion, you're not just a fighter, you're a business partner. And business has been good. I'm not exactly at liberty to tell you exactly what I made, but with the performances that I've been putting on lately, I have to say these are starting to stack up a little bit more, more. Cool. All right, so we talked about how I made my first million. Now let's talk about how I spent my first million. Well, my daughter's birthday <laughs> was the first big purchase. I had to go big. So between that and I bought a nice white Nissan Maxima. So a combination of both cost me about 30,000. It was just such an extravagant party. We had everything, you know, we had catered food. Grandma's like a party planner. She's amazing with kids' parties. At the time, no, the Nissan Maxima wasn't the dream car. The Nissan Maxima was the flyest car in that budget range. So I was young. My uncle was always, you know, if you had a little bit of change, you was balling in the Maxima. Actually, they were balling in the Altimas. The Maxima was a step up. I felt real bossy driving my Maxima. The next purchase was a Rolex. I would say all in all with the tax and everything, the shipping is close to about 20,000. After the RDA fight, going into the Woodley fight, it was just something about my manifestation with the work that I put in. I'm about to become world champion, so I need to look like a world champion. I need that Rolex. So my coach and his wife took me to a jeweler in, in Florida and I was able to go in and see all the watches and I'm like, yo, I like this. Then I go over to the Rolex and I see the big presidential. I'm like, I want that. And then they showed me the price tag. I was like, nah, I want the other one. <laughs> I want that one. I found one that was just beautiful. It was nice. It went with everything and it just made me feel that feeling. 
each and every fight I, I make sure that my trainers and my coaches are taken care of because they make a lot of sacrifices for me to give me that time and, and really give me that extra special attention. So after fights, I always want to make sure that I deviate at least 20% on the side for them. And I always want to make sure that they're taken care of and that they feel appreciated for the time the work and the effort that they put into me. So I would say about, all in all, allocate about 20%, so about 200,000 that I've taken care of. Definitely. The most important thing for me is, is my daughter making sure that she's good. So she's in a private school, so each year that runs me about close to 10 to 15,000. She's in the second grade, so all in all, allocate almost 30,000, but to my daughter, and she's worth it. She used to always like hit mitts with me in the garage and she already told me, she said, had a little attitude in her eyes. You know I'm not gonna be a fighter. I'm like, I don't want you to be a fighter. I want you to be a doctor. She goes, well, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> That's how she answers me. Like, I don't know, we'll see. Don't really have a dream school for her, but as an immigrant, I understand which schools I would like for her to go to. It sounds better for me to tell my friends. My daughter goes to Harvard. Stanford, those Ivy League still hold precedent. If I had a choice, I would want her to go to one of those on a full scholarship, of course. 500,000, half a million, that was the house. I ain't really get the infinity pool, but somebody cuts my grass. We got that. I bought it after last fight, so. Everything's been getting, like the designer's been sending stuff over. I just was able to spend the first night in it. It was, it was a good feeling. Everything I always heard, yeah, you gotta put money in the market. You, know, you gotta invest and, and this, invest, invest. I'm like, all right. I didn't really know what I was doing. So a friend introduced me to some lady who invests for you. So she approaches me, we have a conversation, we talk. She was attractive, of course. Nothing happened on that front, but she was attractive, so it was very easy to be distracted. I give her about almost 60,000. I haven't seen that money since. Yeah. I don't think I did my due diligence as far as the homework and the research behind this person. Gave her about 60 bands and <laughs> just flew away. So after that one, I had a pretty bad taste in my mouth for investing, but somehow was talked into investing again. This time I was around some wise people. I went in on the market myself this time, invested another 30K, which has paid off big time. So the next big purchase that I bought is, of course, new house. New whip, you gotta boss up now. Got the Range Rover, the Velar though, the Velar. The Velar was nice, it was smooth, it was just came out. I loved it. Black on black with the nice little, you know, leather. I ran me about 80,000 for that one. My oldest brother, Dr. Usman, is getting married. I was part of this wedding, getting married too, so I was partially responsible for kicking in. Doing some business with my brother, now investing again, starting to really diversify the portfolio. We went in on some real estate, and then I also kicked in for his wedding. So all in all, rounding out, I would say about 50,000. It makes me feel good that they were able to experience that, that I was able to experience those things. Because now when it's actually in front of you, this is just paper. But this paper created so many memories in those times. It's a feeling that you can't really replace. You can't replicate that feeling. I'm totally grateful for this, but at the end of the day, it's just paper. All right, GQ Sports, you guys saw and heard how I made, saved, and of course spent my first million, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm gonna see y'all later, I'm gonna see y'all later.